Good morning and welcome. How good it is to be together this morning and as we go into the fall season to know that God is giving us into a time of rest, renewal as we go and the leaves begin to fall. But wherever we are watching from in the country today, we are united in praise for our Lord. And this morning, we are going to take a little extra time this morning to talk about the disability ministry focus of the United Methodist Church. Uh, yesterday, I completed our annual survey that we're required to do in getting ready for our charge conference, and we have about a 10-page checklist that we go through to see how welcoming our church is to people who have disabilities physically or other handicaps that might keep them from coming in to be in worship with us. And of course, one of the great things that we have that isn't even included on the survey is our ability to be with people who are at home or in the hospital or who cannot travel to be with us so that we find ways to bring hope and healing to the world. And I will tell you that this score, church scores very highly on the list of things. One of the things we need to do is become more accessible in our handicapped bathroom on this floor. But we have plans. We have ways. So this morning, it's good to be together and to talk and to celebrate and see what it is like, really, to be in a place where we cannot access and be in the presence of God. But this morning, I say, Lord, how awesome it is that we can gather here today and loudly sing praises to your name and know we are standing in your presence. Uh, Lord, I can't stand. I use a wheelchair and there's no place for my chair. Oh, well, why don't we just put you out here in the, oh wait. No, we can't do that, can we? Oh well, I'm sorry, but it really is great, Lord, that we are able to hear you speak to us through the proclamation of the word this I'm sorry, God, I didn't hear what was said. You didn't hear what was said. Oh dear. Well, anyway, Lord, it's fantastic to be able to read your word along with the pastor and the congregation and recite all the creeds and the litanies and read together this morning. And This morning my vision is dim. God, I cannot read the bulletin. You can't read the bulletin, even in large print. Oh, yes. Well, sorry about that. Um, but Lord, we really feel blessed that we understand everything that is happening around us in the church at this hour, don't we? God, why do I learn so much slower than others and must feel week after week that I do not really belong here? Oh dear, I'm so sorry for all of you and we will try harder. And by the way, we do have a portable ramp that will get this wheelchair up and down. But it takes a moment to stop and see what it feels like to be someone that may not be able to access worship with all of us. So let's pray together. Will you pray with me? Open us, O oh God. Make us accessible to your spirit and accessible to all your people. Amen, and thank you. Thank all of you. And as I said to Fran earlier, I love these kids. I can have my glasses back. So I'm taking a moment at a time like this to think about even as many efforts as we have here, how can we do more? And how can we be even more welcoming and even more accepting? So let us think of that as we prepare now to worship our almighty God.
Good morning, everyone. The center and words today come from Psalm 34, 15 through 18. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The ears of the Lord hear their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears them and delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. Come take refuge in the Lord, for God is good. Come rejoice in the Lord, for God will provide peace for you. Come open your hearts to the Lord, and you will be given blessings. Let us pray. Great, true, and God. Through Jesus Christ, our great internal high priest, we give to you praise and consecrate ourselves to follow you. As we worship you and celebrate your glorious resurrection, open our eyes so that we may see. Open the eyes of our mind to learn and understanding. Open the eyes of our heart to love and compassion. Open the eyes of our soul to see our spiritual selves during our time of worship. Amen. Our opening praise, Ask Ye What Great King I Know, can be found on page 163 in your hymnal. seated and now let us go before the Lord in prayer let us pray dear Lord and Heavenly Father how good it is to pause in the quiet of this space and too often we take for granted this safe quiet space where we can come, put the cares of the world aside, and be alone with you. We look around happy to see faces this morning, but also sad that there are those of our members who are in the hospital, in recovery, in illness at home. You know where they are, Lord, and you know their needs at this moment, and we lift them up to you. Because just like Jesus did with the blind beggar Bartimaeus, Jesus knows what Bartimaeus needs. But you want to hear us ask to make us see the things around us where your love and touch are needed. 
where we might not be as welcoming as we could be, or where we have put our own interests ahead of simple little things that we can do that will bring a smile, bring a word of comfort, just a presence that says, I see you, you are worthy, you are God's child, come walk with me. It seems every Sunday we pray the same prayers for peace in the world, for the hot spots where people are kidnapped, missionaries in Haiti. We don't even know what denomination they belong to, but we know that they went to do your word and your will, and now their lives are in danger, and we pray for them. We pray for those still actively stationed around the world and at home in our military that they have joined, enlisted, and gone to serve their country. For them we ask protection, and may we ever see that day in our lifetime even when the lamb shall lie down with the lion, swords beaten into plowshares, and we learn war no more. But for now we pray for all our military leaders for judicious, correct decisions to protect our freedom and teach the concept of freedom as you, Lord, would have freedom for all of your children in this world. We are still struggling with the COVID infection, with the unknown. We pray for our teachers, our children, our doctors and nurses and first responders are worn out, Lord. They're tired and yet they struggle on. Give them strength, give them more strength as you have for so long. Because we come together this morning knowing that you have a future for us and that future is for the good of all of your kingdom. Just like blind Bartimaeus, we know that you can lead us into sight to see things where you need us to go and that is what we are praying for today, Lord one step at a time, but also with the vision of the future that shows us where the pain is in our world, in our community, in our schools, in our neighborhood, and how can we be your agents of healing? But first we must ask you to heal us, heal our prejudices, heal our short-sightedness, heal our fears, Lord and give us that strength of faith that we, like Bartimaeus, throw off our cloak and run into the future that you open for us. We ask this all as we gather today and we pray together as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, in appreciation for all the gifts that God has given us, let us return to God our portion for the work of God's kingdom.
lift your name on high and we bring before you humbly these gifts that may use to build the kingdom. Speed them on their way that all may learn of your love. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now will you please remain standing and join with me in this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated, and the children can now go to Junior Church. The Hebrew scripture lesson comes from Job 42, 1 through 6. Then Eliphaz the Terminite replied, If someone ventures a word with you, will you be impatient? But who can keep from speaking? Think how you have instructed many, how you have strengthened feeble hands. Your words have supported those who stumbled. You have strengthened faltering knees. But now trouble comes to you, and you are discouraged. It strikes you, and you are dismayed. Should not your piety be your confidence and your blamelessness always weighs your hope? The epistle lesson comes from Hebrews chapter 7, 23 through 28. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all, when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priest men in all their weakness, but the oath which come after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. The Psalter can be found on page 769 on your hymnal. It's Psalm 34, 1 through 8. And we will only read the first eight verses. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to God and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor cried out and the Lord heard and save them out of all their troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. This is the word of the Lord, and now let us stand as able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel this morning comes from the book of Mark, continuing our travels with Jesus, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, 
Get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. seated. On the road to Jericho. I went over this passage with uh, our teenagers this morning, the ones that did that wonderful skit. Weren't they wonderful this morning? That I can come in on Sunday morning and say, hey, I want to do something. They say, okay. And then they take it and they make it their own. And what a wonderful witness it is to us when we can see and feel and hear. Even There was actually some pain in their voices as they were talking about not being able to see, to move, to have access. And it all makes us more aware because we are all, like the disciples, on our road through Jericho. And I was teaching them as we were going over this Bible verse together this morning that Yes, we know Jesus is going to heal a blind person, but there's so much rich understanding packed into just this little handful of verses. They were coming through Jericho, which was a very angry, difficult city. They're on the road. It's hot. It's dusty. The crowds are building because people want to be with this teacher Jesus, and they are on their road to Jerusalem. And we all, every one of us, is a different spot in a journey on a road from one town, one circumstance, one place in our lives to another. And so they are on the road. And a few weeks ago, we saw, again, Jesus healing a blind man. And so perhaps Bartimaeus has heard about this Jesus who healed a blind man. And again, there is so much packed into the sentence that just tells us that he was a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. He's blind. That's the first way anybody introduces him. Do they introduce him as Timaeus' son? No, he's a blind beggar who happens to be a son of Timaeus. And we talked this morning about the biblical times when, and even years up into our own 19th, 20th, 21st century, not understanding causes of blindness. And at one point in the scriptures, in a story of a blind healing, the disciples actually say to Jesus, "Uh, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he's blind? Because the understanding was that if there was a disability of any kind, it was bad, the people were bad, the parents did something wrong, Even I can remember going back into my own childhood when someone had a child who had any kind of disability, that child was hidden away. We don't talk about that. They even had, I I can remember going to uh, the boys and girls room in the basement of High Street School, which was an old crumbling building back then even, and when we went downstairs through all the pipes and the, uh, basement, that's my memory, it was, there was a room down there, and it was a classroom, and I know there were handicapped children with a special need, and they even call it special needs teacher, and we were told, don't look at them, just keep going, and the stigma, and the, the feeling, and this is why we need to be constantly thinking that we're doing uh, good in accepting people, but looking for different ways that we can make it even better. 
We're looking right now into hearing assisted devices that even with our sound system, and thank you, Mason's gone, but they, or no, it wasn't Mason, it was um, Morgan who couldn't hear, that even with our sound system, we still may have people that need a little bit of help. Anything we can do to be welcoming, accepting, and bringing the word of God. So here is a man who is identified, first of all, by his disability. He's blind. He's a beggar. Well, why is he beggar? a beggar? Because his family has rejected him. And there's something interesting in the different translations as to whether or not this man was born blind. The translation I'm using here, which is New English Bible, tells us he regained his sight. But at any rate, he is handicapped to the point that his only income is to sit by the road and beg. But somehow he knows Jesus is coming. And Jesus is coming. We know that. Are we ready to listen and ready to respond the way he was? Anyway, he knows Jesus is coming. Perhaps people told him. And he's crying out. He's crying out. He's saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. And there is one translation that actually says, instead of have mercy on me, he's crying out, listen to me, hear me. He's being bold, here's his chance. And people are saying, shut up, hush. They're ashamed of him, they're pushing him aside. But wasn't it just a few weeks ago that we heard Jesus overriding the disciples who are kind of acting like bodyguards, and we can understand that, to protect their master. But they, they, he tells them to bring the children. Let the children come to me. Let everyone come to me, even the blind beggar that people are pushing aside. And do we have the confidence that that Bartimaeus had that Jesus has what we need to be whole and to be healed, whether it is a physical deformity and disability or whether it is a spiritual limitation. Do we have that confidence? Because they quieted him, but he didn't give up. He yelled even louder until finally, now don't you think Jesus knew he was there? Don't you think he was on Jesus' radar to begin with? but he wanted to see how strong his faith was that he would persist boldly. Son of man, have mercy on me. And even in using the term son of man, he is, Bartimaeus is putting it in terms of a, a physical leader, a king, a military leader. His faith has not grown to the point of knowing that this is the Lord of Lords that supersedes even the strongest and best-hearted military leader. But he calls him by the name he knows. And that's where we have to start. We have to start calling out to Jesus from the level of our knowledge and where we were. It's a wonderful hymn. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives wild reckless sea of all the noise around me jesus calls and as i said he at one point he said in one translation jesus have mercy but the common english bible says jesus show me mercy that bold i know you can do it jesus that faith show us there is a time to be humble we need to be humble before god aware of our human limitations, and humbly aware of the magnificence of God. But there's also a time to be bold and a time to cry out, shout. One of the things we talk about in the grief counseling ministry is the gift of lament, of being able to put our feelings, our pain into words. I've invited people to write their own lament. You see lament crying out, why God? And here's how I feel God, and I'm angry about this God. But why are we doing it in the first place? Because we know God's listening. Because we know God is listening. So we have to put this into words in the form of a lament. Because if we don't cry out, how can God answer? 
And so when Bartimaeus cried out, son, son of David, have mercy on me, show me mercy, then Jesus was ready to invite him and bring him forward. And think about this. We, we read it, okay, fine. He was healed, he could see, and he followed Jesus. But stop and think that once he could see and once he chose to join the parade, the procession, and follow Jesus, his whole life has changed. He's going to find another source of income. He's no longer going to be able to rely on the few coins he was getting by the side of the road. Will his family take him back? We don't know. That's not part of this story. Then we know that there are other stories of healing where the family rejoices. But we don't know. We just know that he gave up what was comfortable, what he knew, but he knew there was more. He knew that if he were healed, if he could follow Jesus. Now, he doesn't know where Jesus is going, but he knows he wants to follow him, and he wants to commit his life at this point to following him. Because we know, like he did, that Jesus is on the way, but are we ready? Are we listening for Jesus so when we hear and feel the call, we will be ready to respond? And one of the preaching seminars I was in this week, we were emphasizing what a bold move this was for Bartimaeus to persistently keep crying out, keep calling, because he knew Jesus would answer. Do we know, do we have that same confidence that if we keep crying out, either as a congregation saying, Lord, where do you need us in the world? Or in our personal lives, Lord, where do you need me? Where do I need healing? Are we ready to get up, leave where we have been, and follow? Uh, I've been going, uh, like a lot of you do, to Wawa to get coffee. And you know the beautiful thing about Wawa is you run in and get your coffee run out that fast. Well, I went into uh, a Wawa near my house recently because I need that shot of caffeine to get me moving, get me going. And they had all new coffee machines. And instead of going to a big bat and getting your coffee filled, now I'm confronted by this computerized machine that you have to push different buttons and it makes one cup at a time so you can customize your cup of coffee. Want a, uh, a 16 ounce, push that button. Do you want space in your cup so you can add cream, push that button. Do you want um, hazelnut, which I never understood, uh, bold or Arabic or what kind of blend? I want coffee, people, okay? Uh, and as I'm making all these choices, there's one button there that says an extra shot of bold. Push the button on top of everything else and you get an extra shot of bold. I think we need an extra shot of bold in our lives right now. I think we do. We need to be bold, we need to keep calling. But then the other part of this is, if we're asking Jesus to help us see, to take away whatever blindness we have, whatever filters we're seeing the world, whatever prejudices, are we ready for what God might reveal? What might we see if we focused in on what God wants us to see? We saw a little bit of it this morning, being aware of where God needs us to be more sensitive to the needs of God's children who are different, but at the same time, unique. And how do we celebrate? How do we see? And when do we know to be bold? And sometimes being bold is simply as much as saying a kind word, holding the door open, something that might surprise someone with kindness, that might make their day a little less painful. But we need to be bold in praying to God for what God wants us to do. We need to learn to trust and obey and sincerely pray God to open our eyes. Let's pray for that.
Go forth, go in faith, go boldly. And as you go, take this benediction with you. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit walk with you and nurture you now and forever. Amen. Amen.